Hey everyone, welcome back to Crypto. In this tutorial, we're going to create a custom pawn class with enhanced input in Unreal Engine 5. Let's implement movement for forward, backward, and strafing left and right. So the first thing I'm going to do is in this blank C++ project, I'm going to just go to tools and select new C++ class. And I'm just going to select this pawn, hit next, and I'll just leave the name as my pawn and hit create class. So when my Visual Studios opens up, I'm just going to select reload all. And it's going to launch mypawn.cpp and mypawn.h. So this .h is called a header file, which is where we can define our components, our input actions, and our movement functions. So in mypawn.h, the first thing I'm going to do is just add a few includes. So under my game framework slash pawn.h, remember that mypawn.generated.h has to be at the very bottom. So I'm just going to add include game. So I'm going to add this game framework floating pawn movement, and then I'll add include input action dot H, and then I'll add input mapping context dot H like so. And that's pretty much all we need for our includes. And now what I need to do is add two main components here, which is the static mesh to give our pawn a visible mesh and a floating pawn movement in order for us to handle movement. And then we'll also declare some input actions to move forward and sideways. So let's go ahead and start with that. So under the bottom, under my setup player input component, I'm just going to create a few spaces and add some components. So first I will define a U property, which is going to be visible anywhere. And the category of this will be components. And now let's define it by calling it U static mesh component. And we'll call the variable mesh component, which we will refer to in our C++. And now I'm simply just going to copy this top line and create one for our movement. And this one will be from our class U floating pawn movement, like so. And then we will call this floating movement. And now let's add some input actions for enhanced input. And this will all be exposed in blueprints. So no worries to configure that as soon as we get in. So let's go ahead and add another U property, which is going to be an edit anyway. And I also want this to be blueprint read and write, just so we can configure this in the detailed panel of our pawn when we create a child blueprint class. And the category of this will be input. And I'm going to create a U input action, and we'll just call this move forward action. And now I can just copy paste this and just call the second one move right action, like so. And now I simply just want to add the input mapping context, and this will tell our pawn the controls it can use. So we're simply just going to add a U property, which will be a type edit anywhere. And it'll also be a blueprint read write, and the category will be input as well. And then I will call this variable input mapping context, like so. And now down here, I'm just going to define our movement function void move forward, and we're going to take an input of a const, which is going to be a type f input action value of type of called uh, f input action value called value, and then the same thing for the move right. So I'll just call this move right over here. And that's pretty much it. That's all we need for our header file. And now let's start implementing our mypawn.cpp. So when we head over to our C++ file, here let's start initializing our components and set up the movement logic. We'll also add some code to bind the input action using Unreal Engine's enhanced input system. So at the top under the my include, under hashtag include, under the mypawn.h, first I will include the enhanced input component.h. And this is just going to be for our input binding. Next, I want to include the enhanced input subsystems, which is going to be for adding mapping context. And then I want to add the input action value. And this is for getting values from our actions. And then I want to include a component, which is the static mesh component, so that we can assign our pawn a static mesh. And then I also want to add that floating pawn movement for our movement controllers. And then I also want to include a player controller. So inside of my constructor that is called a my pawn colon colon a my pawn under this tick, I'm simply just going to create and attach the static mesh component. So I'll call this mesh component. And now we're going to create a default sub object. And let's look for that static mesh component. And this will just be called mesh component like so. And just some formatting issues. I forgot the, uh, greater than sign on the other side of this static mesh component. And now let's make a variable called root component, which will be assigned to the mesh component. And now I simply just want to create and attach the floating movement. 
So I'm going to call floating movement and this will be our component. So it's going to be a create default sub object, you floating upon movement. And then I'll add some text and this is just going to say floating movement and then add your semicolon at the end. And now we need to adjust our begin play. So first under our super begin play, the first thing I need to do is actually get our player controller. And I'll do that simply by calling a player controller player controller is equal to cast a player controller and then I'll call the get controller function and then if so we're going to check if a player controller exists so if our player controller exists then we're going to get the enhanced input subsystem from local player so I'll call the u enhance input local player subsystem and we'll just call this subsystem is equal to our local player get subsystem and then the player controller will be assigned to the get local player like so so a pretty hefty line here and now we just want to add the input mapping context to the subsystem so if and i'll copy the variable subsystem and i'll copy that input mapping context that we created over here so basically if our subsystem and input mapping context then i'm simply just going to add the input mapping i'm going to assign that input mapping context and this zero just means it's priority zero, which is top priority. And now I'll scroll down and we need to set up our input component to the enhance input component. So inside the setup player input component, so we're going to check if our U enhance input component is equal to the cast of our U enhance input component and our player component, add an extra parentheses, then we need to bind the move forward action and we also want to bind the move right action so let's start with the move forward so the move forward it's going to call that enhance input action and then we're simply just going to bind the action to the move forward action and this will trigger an event and we'll leave it as triggered kind of like how you have those when you add those ia underscore those input acts when you when you add those input actions you'll see stuff like triggered on start on release and so on in this case we're just going to have it be on triggered because we want it to take place while we're holding it down. And then I'll call this a my pawn. And then we're going to call the move forward so we can continue moving forward. And I can just copy this line and just change my move forward to move right action. And now I need a way to handle our forward and backward movement. And then I need to handle our left and right movement. And then we can actually go on and test this. So in order to handle forward and backwards, and I'll just add some comments for readability. I'm simply just going to create a function called void a my pawn, which is going to call our move forward function. And it's going to be that const type of the f input action value that we created called value. And in here, we're just going to add a const float movement value. It's going to be equal to value dot get, and we're going to get the float. So this will get the float value from the input action. And now let's check if our float is zero. So if floating movement and movement value is not equal to 0, 0.0 f, then we're simply just going to add input vector. So I'll call the floating movement and add input vector. And then in here, I will get actor forward vector, which you might be familiar in blueprints if you're new to C++, and this will be multiplied by the movement value. And now I can actually copy this function under here and just instead of move forward, change this to move right. And instead of get forward vector, I can do get actor right vector, like so, like so. And now let's actually test this in our project. So I'm gonna right click my project and click clean. And then I will right click and build as soon as this is ready or rebuild, whichever you prefer. And now after I hit play, if it asks you to rebuild, just go ahead and click yes. And now it'll launch my project. And now after it launches my project, you'll notice this C++ classes folder and I can go ahead and go in and you'll see the my pawn over here. I'm just going to right click and create a blueprint class based on my pawn. And I'll just call this um, BP, BP underscore pawn and hit enter and it should launch a pawn character like so. And it, you're going to be able to see on the left that it already has a component, the floating movement that we created and this static mesh component. So I'm just going to go ahead and assign this to a cube. So I'll just go ahead and do a good looking one. So this yellow one that's default in Unreal and hit compile. And you're gonna notice a couple things when you hit my pawn in the details. So when we scroll down, 
we're going to be able to see where we added those components. So because we set the category to input in our C++, so as stated here, we got input, input, and input, and this is our move forward action, move right action, and input mapping context, you're going to be able to see those right here. We have our move forward action, move right action, and our input mapping context. So let's go ahead and create this and see if we can actually move our pawn. So I'm going to go back to my content browser, right click, and then under input, I'm going to create an input action. And I'll just call this IA underscore move forward. And I'll double click to open this up. And I'll just set this to something like an axis. I'll set this to an axis 2D. And then I'll hit save. And I'm going to go back and actually just, I can just duplicate this. And I'll call this IA underscore move right. And this will also be set to an axis 2D. And I can cancel out of those. And now what I want to do is just right click. And I'm going to create a input mapping context. And I'll just call this IMC pawn. Double click to open this up and we're going to add a couple mappings. So I'm going to add the move forward and I'm also going to add the move right. So I'll open both of these up and I want to add another one, another control inside each of these because we want to be able to go forward and backwards and left and right. So while I click on this keyboard, you're going to see this yellow highlighted keyboard pop up. This just means we can select any keyboard on our mouse and keyboard in order to select that value. So if I click W on my keyboard here or S on my keyboard here, it'll select those respectively. And I'll do the same thing for A and D. And now I want to set some modifiers up so that our pawn can move in the proper direction. So for the W value, I'm just going to add a modifier. And this will just simply be a scalar type where the S will be the modifier of a negate, which is pretty much the opposite of what we're the opposite direction. And then that's going to be the same for the A key. So we'll add negate for A to go left. Move right will be our positive, which is simply going to be, I'll actually get rid of this. And then for the D key, we don't need to add any modifiers. So now back in my BB pawn, I'm going to set those accordingly. So I'll set the move forward action. I'll set the move forward action to the IA move forward, move right action to IA move right, and the input mapping context to that IMC pawn. And now when I hit compile, what I want to do is in my world settings, if you don't see this, go to Windows and then make sure world settings is checked. I'm just going to add a simple game mode so I can adjust these settings. So I'll just right click and create a new blueprint class, add a game mode base, and I'll just call this BP underscore GM. And then I'll just drag this on top. Now where it says default pawn class, I'm simply just going to drag my BP pawn and just create and just drag it on top of this so I can actually control this character. And I'll just go ahead and hit play. And I can move around as the cube as you can see here, but I, I am, I forgot to add a camera so I can actually see the cube move. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go back to our BP pawn and I'm simply just going to add a spring arm component like so. And then I'm going to nest the camera in here simply by selecting spring arm and then just creating a camera underneath like so. And now when I hit compile and play, I can see my cube and I can actually use my WASD to move. And that's how you set up a custom pawn using enhanced input in Unreal Engine 5 in C++. If this video helped you, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. Thanks for watching Curtis Row, and let me know what you want to see next. Keep practicing your C++, and if you are new to C++, don't forget to watch my C++ videos and even my C++ Ultimate Beginners course that I'll link in the description below to get started in C++. It's very important to know the fundamentals of vanilla C++ before jumping into Unreal Engine C++. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.